Uh, Greetings family, this is Bomani Tayemba. Welcome to our Africa Tours conference call for Sunday, April 19th. And this is a conference call set for 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 8 p.m. And we may go over this a little bit. I'm your tour organizer and uh, for our following tours that we have coming up, we're going to Ghana, Senegal, the Gambia, and South Africa. Also, the uh, investment information for our Black Star community. Uh, so those are the things that I represent on our website, Africa for the Africans.org. Uh, so the history of the tours that we've been doing uh, started literally uh, 16 years ago when I first traveled to Senegal and the Gambia. And then now 16 years later, we're doing this multiple journeys. But what you'll see over the period of looking over at the information that's being presented and being shared is a decade and a half of experience traveling to nine different African countries and just putting together a program that give us a nice roots and culture connection uh, along with just a vibrant uh, connection into modern Africa. As so all the details that uh, we go through, it's a lot of details, but the goal is to give you full details and clarity. That way you can get the best of your journey slash investment. So what I've been doing lately with the conference call is just putting it more in the newsletter and all the details in it so you can see the pictures and have all access to the links. Uh, so once you open up the conference call and you can just click on the top that says view this email in your browser if it's not clear enough uh, from the email. Uh, it starts out with a, uh, two, of one of, two of the three last uh, uh, group pictures. Uh, you see us in red shirt and then a uh, green shirt. Uh, you scroll down, what I have is a conference call details and it's telling you that we have a conference call today, April 19th, but also uh, May 10th, so you can you know, be clear on the next conference call in the same time duration. And below it, uh, you'll see the link and information for all conference calls. So if you want to uh, do the online connection, there's a link there that connects you. And if you're calling from international, there's a link to do different dial-in numbers. And in general, the online link is just for anyone in the world. All right, I'll scroll down some more. Another one of our group pictures. And then you see information for uh, previous conference call recordings. So on our YouTube channel, uh, once you get there, uh, you'll see um, tours and investment conference calls. So that's literally all of the conference calls I've done for the last uh, seven years or longer. And uh, since I've been putting them on YouTube. And all of them, especially most of the current ones, are edited and cleaned up to where once you listen to them, it just give you full information without a bunch of distortions and things like that. So even after the conference call, if you want to go back and listen to the information, it's edited and presented to where you have slideshow pictures and documentation supporting what we're talking about. Right, and uh, you scroll down some more, and also family, this um, newsletter, it's uh, long, but it's one of those things where you have to just take your time and scroll down. There's no quick one page we can put together with all of the tour information. Uh, so just like when you go to the website, uh, all of the information for the tours are broken up into different sections. All right, so what I'm going to do is get to the main uh, part of the list of all the current tours that we have. And you can also view this information on our website. Now, so once you're on our website, Africa for the Africans org, uh, you can look to the main menu to the left, and you see all these links I'm going to go over, which is the links that represent all of the tour information for all the tours that we have for this year. And as soon as you go to the uh, website and you're scrolling down right there, I want you to call the main page. You'll see a set of links um, that represent the different tours, and the last one represent uh, Black Star Community. So once you click on those links, they give you direct information to, to all the details. So, so the schedule that we have set uh, coming up is Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour, May 25th to June 5th. Uh, Senegal and the Gambia uh, Roots Tour, July 24th to August 3rd. So the Senegal and the Gambia journey that was set for April has been rescheduled based on no available flights. Country or airports not being accessible. So that's what we have set right there, and that's how we work it in any situation. If there's a tour that needs to be canceled for whatever reason, it's being uh, rescheduled. So 
This represents a list of all the tours and the current dates that we have, and all these tours are a go. And if anyone have any questions about issues they may have with, um, you know, whatever dealing with coronavirus, uh, the best thing I recommend is jot your questions down. Once we open up this, ask the full, clear, detailed questions and get a detailed reply back. And the same thing you can do via email. Uh, so. Only tour that we have to reschedule, once again, is the Senegal and the Gambia Roots Tour, which I spoke to everyone that was part of that group, and that's what we do. Uh, we just communicate everyone that's traveling with us at that moment, and in a situation like that, we just work on a reschedule date that worked for everyone, and that's what we did. And for those who are open to traveling to Senegal and the Gambia in July, uh, you know, we still have space. Um, available and we can just add you in and all you have to do is just send me an email and we'll just uh, get you all set up. All right, after these two summer journeys, the next two we have is fall, winter. So we have South Africa Roots and Culture Tour for November 20th to the 30th, 2020. And then we have Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour December 22nd to January 3rd. Uh, so, um, and then the first journey that we have for next year is Senegal and the Gambia uh, Roots Tour for April 2nd to the 12th, 2021. So those are the five features uh, journey and all you have to do is click on the link from the newsletter or from the website and then you get access to the full details including the full itinerary, full tour overview, uh, full general terms, um, uh, visa information if it's relevant and, and note that the general terms of the cancellation and refund and tour transfer policy. Uh, that way, you know, you're clear on if something happened and you need to cancel or, or, or get a refund or reschedule, it gives you the, that detail and clarity and then you just basically send an email to get a detailed reply back. We definitely understand situations come up and everybody's situation is not going to be all the same. So if anyone would think that their situation is the same as everybody else, uh, trust me, it, it's not, and we have to deal with things based on individual situations. Some people may want a cancellation and get a refund. Some people may want a tour transfer. Some people may want to reschedule. All those things have different situations. But the main thing to understand is once you veer away from the tour date that you committed to and you put money down on, the flights are being arranged and things are being set up. So any adjustments, you know, incurs certain charges and things like that. Or sometimes you just, it may work out where you just get a tour transfer and there's no additional charges. But that's the purpose of that policy because if you have a tour of 30 people and 15 people cancel, a bunch of things change. It's not that simple. It's just a bunch of math and a bunch of calculations and a bunch of things that have to be organized and adjusted. Um, and you may not look at it like that, but you know, it's things that have to be done and taken care of. So everything that you see and is written is written before we communicated and that's the purpose of it being there so you can be clear because um, one of those you know, military tactical person that plan everything out to a T, you know, act of God, things like that, earthquake so, and so on, life and business has to keep going on so you know you do your best to adjust and work with individuals that's being affected as best as you can and remember once again all these details are written publicly right on the website for your knowledge and clarity before any commitments. Uh, so um, just like I have to adjust myself and be available for all of these schedules. So anything else I'm trying to do in my life outside this schedule, I just have to not even focus on it. And you know, regardless of what it, what happens, and you know, words come to worst, you just you're, you just communicate with everyone. But then everyone understand that there's been a whole the world is changed and the world has just gone completely mad with a whole array of different things about COVID-19 and coronavirus from scare to fear to epidemic to pandemic to so on. And you know, just like anything else, we have to keep moving forward. So if someone directly does feel whatever way about whatever situation, I don't take anything personal. I'm here to do business. I'm here to progress us forward and keep holding the line. Um, but, uh, you know, so the best thing I would recommend anyone, once you look through everything um, for the future and then for those who are currently in, on tours, just 
send emails and communicate with me. I get up every day and work on. The main thing I check is uh, emails that need a direct reply back. Uh, that way, you know, we have a lot of people traveling with us, different countries and situations, and that's the only way we can make this thing work with clarity. So all you see me going over is this clarity and documentation. All right, and before I open things up for uh, the first set of questions and answer, uh, when you go down some more, you see uh, uh, videos and photos of previous tours. Now, the link take you to YouTube and Facebook, and it's literally the showcase and documentation from when we started business uh, from December 2006 to December 2019. 13 years of just pictures and videos. Every gallery, every tour that we've done is on there. Some tours have more videos than anything else, and especially the newer ones. And that's the longevity of you know what we put together that way. Anyone traveling with us can be clear about where we're coming from, what we're building, what we're doing, and how we do it. Uh, and I'm not into surprises. Also, people don't throw me a surprise party. I need to see, be clear about what I'm getting into. And as you scroll down some more, you see uh, the purpose of this conference call, uh, which is to mainly just connect everyone with all the details and to share information and to get everyone connected with each other. Uh, so we have uh, Facebook pages dedicated to each of the journeys. So once you scroll past this topic list, which I'm going to go through, you'll see the links uh, right there for Senegal and the Gambia, South Africa, and then the Ghana May and the Ghana December tours. Uh, so any kind of updates we have or videos or pictures, they're always being posted on those pages. Uh, and you can just go back and scroll down and you'll see the history of time. One thing you'll find out about all the Facebook pages that we have is this number of documentation. So I always tell people if you're going to travel and do these kind of things, do them with someone who knows what they're doing and do them with someone that has everything clear because this is not as simple and as tricky. So that, you know, if the main thing to do is think about the clarity of everything, the prices, the numbers, the figures, and so on, and uh, make sure you no know, hidden costs and make sure you're clear about what's included and not included. So that's what this document does, and ultimately the links that you click on, which give you 100% of the tour details. And so I'm scrolling down to the topic list, and most of these things that we've covered in the summary, um, uh, one, two, three. Uh, number four is uh, Visa. Uh, same thing, once you're on the tour pages, uh, you click on the visa information for Ghana, and also the other country that you need a visa for is the Gambia. And if you travel me and you haven't received um, a visa email from either one, let me know and I have a nice detailed visa email, sample applications, and all of the support and details that you need. That once you click on it, you have access to everything. And then go through some more. So number five on the topic list, uh, Africa culture and customs and what the pack can bring. So even a few previous conference calls, um, I want to say two out of the last five, we went to a complete list of uh, tour preparation details. So one of the, the links that you'll see once you click on any relative tour details is a preparation and departure list for all of the tours. And it gives you this information that you need that you know, if you look at all the details, you won't forget anything and you'll be prepared for everything that you need to be prepared for. So it's kind of a summary list of all the conference calls and all the details that's actually on the site. And six, and then I'm going to break for uh, questions. I improve my immune system. When anyone tell me about yellow fever, coronavirus, or anything, the only thing I can honestly tell anyone is build your immune system. I'm from somewhere very tropical, and we're going somewhere very tropical, sunny, and have all of the wonderful things, uh, mangoes, coconut water, uh, herbs and things like that. So if I'm going to leave from here, I feel good that I'm going somewhere tropical. Anyone that may have any fears of traveling during this era of where we're going, everywhere that I'm taking you to is very tropical. And if you want to get stuck somewhere, as far as being somewhere, that's your best and safest place to be because you have access to what you need as far as making sure you're well without having to take any, anybody's drugs or vaccination and things like that. Uh, so anyone who want to take vaccination, it's all up to them. i um, never been one of the people that recommend anyone takes anything. It's up to individuals and their doctor. But to, to share my point of view on it, 
your medicine is in the culture and the herbs and the and in the, the tropical countries like where we're going to, and all you have to do is just eat and you live well. There's no super medicine that you're going to put in your body, pills or vaccination that's going to save you from anything. But anyway, um, I guess I'm, you know, I'm not a professional and I'm not a medical doctor and things that I'm just speaking from being you know, somewhere very tropical, uh, Jamaica, and seeing how my ancestors lived and seeing that connection to where we come from and the tropical era, modern-day West Africa. And it's following the same guidelines as far as health and wellness and not letting a, a modern-day generation of uh, white devils trick us into literally just poisoning ourselves with a vaccination of medicine. So the improving immune system is a wealth of information and knowledge that has been put together and it was, it's been shared along with, you know, and it's something that I just incorporate into the website. All right, so family, let me get us off lecture mode and see if we have any questions, and then we'll complete the last half of um, the tour preparation overview. All right, family, back in the mute mode. Press star six to unmute yourself and give your name. We are calling from your question. Greetings, everyone. This is Stephanie from Stephanie Long from North Carolina. Hi, greetings, Stephanie. Is, how are you? I'm uh, doing well. Good, good. Well, my question, well, actually it's not a question, it's a statement. Um, well, you know, before all this uh, pandemic uh, lockdown, we were in the process of applying for our visa. And now, like even if due to the fact that they're closed um, and yet, we're supposed to attend Ghana on the 25th of May, if it's still on. What do we do in that case? Yeah, that case, I, um, you just do your best to get an emergency, um, a rush visa as best as possible, and we can get you to the Houston you know, emb embassy or consulate, and you pay for a rush to get it to you within a few days. Uh, that's the best that bet I can say. Um, I figured that everybody had a Ghana visa already, but... That's not something that you know, we can really assume. So that's the best thing you can do. Other than that, uh, you just have to reschedule. Uh, tickets get changed to the dates of the next tour that we have uh, if that situation happens. Because um, none of us can guarantee any situation about people who need to get passports or visa based on the fact that all these departments uh, closed down you know, but literally a month ago which was two months before our travel date. And then some people may have had visa and paperwork in that route. Um, so we do the best we can do on that one. Uh, but we don't so much until the end of the month, because that's when most of these things are beginning to open back up based on, uh, you know, based on gossip online. Right. Because um, actually the week of the, the lockdown is when we were submitted, and that was 60 days prior. Um, okay, because that was my question. And then my other question is just Ghana. Um, we just have to wait to see when they'll open up as well. So I guess everything is up in the air. The best you can go is go by the estimated dates of May 1st opening up. And in your situation, like you, you, know, you just explained, you're in the process, like probably most people I would say, uh, trying to submit information two to three months before we travel, but two to three months before a travel date, a whole bunch of things just went crazy as far as government shut, uh, offices shutting down and, and things like that. So um, we can't, you know, we're not going to hold that against anyone. The only thing we can really do is just put you in a situation where we hold the money from submitting to Delta for final ticketing and then put you on the December date if you're, you know, you're fine with that schedule. We've had to do that with people with different situations with work, whether okay. we're not giving them the days off because, as I was saying in the beginning, this adjustment of madness that people have to deal with, it affected a lot of people different. And just, you know, work, work with everyone. So it may be a chance for that to work, but I'm also letting you know that I, got, I have your back as far as making sure that we we have you set and ready to go. If everything works out and if not, then make the adjustment to make it work for you in December. 
Okay, so the next available would be December because I thought that the previous call, I mean, we were discussing um, sometime August or July or something of that sort. Uh, Senegal tour got canceled and that was changed to July 24th. Okay. Uh, so, but as far as as far as flight restrictions and things, the best estimate we can give is that flights will be available back in May based on all the things that, you know, you've taken from what this president say, that president in this country, what the folks who run different departments say and things like that. If we need to push our Ghana May date back, yes, it was, we can go for June, 30 days okay. after that. But that's the only other option that we have. Other than that, the next option is December. But if we do the May journey and then a few people have passports that are stuck or visas or things like that, the best we can do is work out the situation where, because whatever tickets that we pay for, people can make it based on certain things. Delta is offering still right now to where they transfer the change of the ticket versus other options. Only thing I could tell anyone who may not make it is that the ticket will be, could be changed to the date of December. Uh, let me know if that's clear. I don't want to keep uh, dragging on. And you and I can also talk. It is clear. Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, you and I will definitely talk and we'll keep you posted. Sure. Thanks again. Right. My family line is open. Anyone have any questions? Press star six. Seven. Yes, sir. Uh, Hansel hey, Jeffrey. I'm calling from, from Arizona. Hey, uh, Green Hansel. And, and the question I have for you are, uh, if we don't make the May tour and we go on the December tour, is there going to be additional out-of-pocket expenses as far as I go? Uh, no, it's no additional expenses. i uh, give you a good example. If the ticket is paid for uh, in five days, because uh, most of us, with exception of maybe a few people, have balances and things like that, um, what, we have to, what we do is literally... We can't travel in Delta Airlines, and it's the same situation what happened with the Senegal April trip. If we can't travel and flights are being canceled and things like that, um, Delta Airlines is offering a full 100% credit to transfer it within two years to another tour or another flight. So in this case, if all of, us, if all of our tour is canceled for uh, May 25th and then June 25th is an open option or somewhere along that June date, is an open option. Uh, we we'll just make it work for that, and uh, Delta Group Booking would change all of our tickets over because all tickets are per will be purchased in, in Group Booking. Uh, so those are the adjustments and strategies that we have uh, for these things. Just keep on rescheduling. Yeah, I'm, I'm finished. Let us answer a question. Let me know if something is not clear. Oh uh, yeah, that was, that was my last question. Is this? Uh, Looking at the worst, if the tickets have to change, will you guys do that on your end with time? Uh, do we have to do that? No, everything is done on my end. I'll take care of everything. Uh, you answer my question, then. Thank you. Uh, yes, absolutely. So that is it. And then any important information will always be sent via email updated. Uh, you can always reach out to me, and I'll give you a quick update. Okay, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Hi, Bomani. This is Kim from California. How are you? Uh, greetings, Kim. I'm doing well. about yourself? I'm doing well. I have two questions for you. The first one is just clarification. Again, I think I've asked you this before, but this is just for my daughter's clarification. So the yellow fever vaccination is not required. It's just a suggestion to get into Ghana? It's a recommended by the Ghana Embassy, the country itself. Mm -hmm. You know, different countries give recommendation of uh, what they recommend. But at the same time, too, they can't hold you to where it's mandatory, where if you don't get it, they're not going to let you into the country. Uh, just um, like example, uh, when these folks roll out, the, the, you know, they roll out a plan saying uh, you can't travel to Ghana unless you have a COVID-19 um, certification paperwork that you're fine. Then, and then the country of Ghana make it mandatory. That means that you come in on a flight and you don't have it, they send you back where you came from. Um, so Ghana, okay. Ghana, Ghana or no, no countries that we have on our schedule have any restrictions for any kind of vaccination. Um, so that's why I use those terminologies as uh, 
uh, recommended by embassy, uh, but not mandatory by the country. Okay, great. Now my second question is for the May 25th Ghana trip, um, if you go ahead and book the flight and, I mean, will you know beforehand if Ghana is even open? Because right now they're locked down. So my question is, will we go over there and everything be closed? Or, I mean, what is the plan? No, we, 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 we wouldn't go that far. I mean, um, number one, the flight is not going to go over. They can't access the runways and access the landing and you know, doing the things that they need to do. So the, the plan for the airlines ahead of time before they fly to any country is they make sure that uh, the people working operation make sure that country is legitimately running. There's no hijacking. There's no crazy stuff going on before that pl plane takes off. So a worst case scenario, we'd know right then, and then we wouldn't be allowed to get on the flight. A whole lot of crazy stuff would have to happen to where we're flying and we're supposed to be there, and then when we get there, we can't land and things like that. Uh, so those, so everything will be cleared up up front and ahead of time. As I was saying, if we literally can't schedule the flights literally get canceled or any crazy things happen, uh, we have alternate option for June and the next option is for December. Right. Okay. All right. I I have a third question. Sure. Have you have you ever accessed the sky? the Delta Sky uh, Lounge in Amsterdam? Because we're flying into Amsterdam, correct? Uh, yes, we're flying and returning back to uh, Amsterdam. Right. Have you been in the Sky Lounge there? Uh, no, I'm usually just out connecting the folks I'm connecting with and trying to socialize. Okay. So I never get a chance to do those things. I've got okay. to be, be right. the regular people. Well, I'm not a regular person, so okay. <laughs> I can't be up in first class and not like that. People think I'm bougie or you know, I'm out of touch with people. So, you know, <laughs> I got to roll with the blue color style. <laughs> Thanks for answering my question. All right, excellent. Hi, All right, greetings. Hi, good morning. This is about to from Toronto, Canada, and I uh, what you must ask if I would just catch you that. Okay, yeah, greetings, uh, uh, Velta. Can you turn your mic up or speak a little louder? Ooh, let me see what's happening here. Or talk closer can to the mic. Hear, can you hear me better now? Ah, uh, yes, loud and clear. Ah, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Just uh, working a bunch I, of things out. Yeah, I know all these questions are very difficult, and um, we don't even know what's going on. Um, according to what Kim said, just had to that. Um, I'm living in Toronto here, and U.S. and Canada, there are two different situations going on. According to what I understand here from the Prime Minister, we are considering, I mean, opening up borders like June. So even if the U.S. opens and say flights going from the U.S., that's maybe going to be a, a problem for me with flying out. However, um, you mentioned that June would be the next option, which I would be looking forward to. Or December. Yeah, um, uh, also, let me get, get clear to June. June is if the trip gets canceled, like all of the bookings. If individuals can't make it because of visas or their country restriction, uh, we have to reroute them to December. But we only have two tours, either May and December or June and December. Okay. Um, the other question is regards to the visa information. Um, I was applying for my visa, but unfortunately, we know what to um, you know, take over. All right. Um, the trip itinerary or the um, travel itinerary, you know, um, such as the letter and so forth that I received with date, that date, um, would I be still needed to for that to be um, modified? New dates and stuff on it? Yeah, if anything changes and you need new dates, all you have to do is even just send a quick email say, well, money, I just need some updated documents with um, whatever, whether it's a ticket or visa details, and I can just always just. Um, to work on updating and then get it back to you, you know, right away, same day or the next day. So that's not a problem. Right now, um, like you mentioned, uh, Canada situation is different. So even in like a few days, you, you and I would have to probably talk. That's like I'm going to send everyone that's traveling with me in May a direct message, and I'm hoping that everyone who is affected and situation is a little different, they tell me um, in that message that way, when we're finalizing tickets, we can know who ticket information to pull and work something else. 
Kim was asking about the yellow fever. Kim, are you hearing? I just want to um, educate her um, that what she can do is research on inactivated yellow fever versus activated. It's two different stuff there. And um, inactivated, it's a little bit, I would say, um, you know, less side effects and so forth. So she can research on inactivated versus activated yellow fever vaccine. Perfect. Kim, you would like to say anything in reference about the yellow fever? Thank you very much. Um, I was asking for my daughter. I've already had the immunization a few years back when I went to Ghana, um, but my daughter doesn't want to get the, the um, immunization, so that's why I was asking. Yeah. But thank you for the information. Yeah, tell her to read inactivated versus activated, and I would suggest for her to more lean on inactivated. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate you. All right. Anyone else? Uh, star six to unmute yourself. Uh, Debbie, line is open. Do you have a question? Are you asking me, Debbie? All right, uh, greetings, uh, Debbie. I'll go ahead with your question. I just have one question. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. I can hear you loud and clear. My question is, if we go in July on this trip, are we going to have any issues when returning, trying to return back home? Uh, I mean, I know you can't foresee things, but I, 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 my, I'm just concerned with all this is going on. Are we going to have a problem, like, getting stuck in Ghana or you know, getting stuck in a country, are we going to, you know, we're going to have an issue. There's no way for me to uh, say that. The only thing I can tell you is that um, whatever situation is happening, I'm right there with you. I have, you know, it's me and my son rolling, and maybe one or two of uh, family members depends on what trip I'm traveling on. Uh, so um, we're all down to, you know, I, have to, I can't go back and forth with anything. So I, I, I've committed to the schedule based on what we have on the website. So whatever situation that we fall, find ourselves in, we just have to deal with it as a group and be prepared. Uh, there's no way for us to know anything, and um, we just have to stay positive and just uh, just work. You know, put ourselves in the best situation to be fine. Uh, that's the best I can uh, advise. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Bomani Timba. Uh, greetings, uh, greetings, brother. Oh, this is Juma. Uh, greetings, uh, Juma. Uh, Glad your question. I didn't have a question, brother. I just wanted to say hello to you. I hadn't heard your voice in a long time. Absolutely, and let me mute a few people. A few people had their line open. I'm going to mute everybody back. I thought Juma is on for uh, Go ahead with your name. Um, my name is Jacqueline. I'm here in Longville, Georgia. I have a question in regards to the trip in December. Um, if by chance you're rerouting some individuals to the December tour, is it possible that you may run out of space? No, I don't see us running out of space. Yeah, the world really has to change to so run out of space on these journeys. It's hard to find black people want to come to Africa. Um, but nevertheless, um, yeah, but yeah, there's no running out of space. So if I have 50 people, I got two buses. If I got 90 people, I got three buses. Okay. And I got enough people there in the country in hotels. Okay. And um, when do you normally have like a payment arrangement starting for the December trip? Uh, that tour is in session. And we started collecting payments uh, usually a year before the tour. So once you're on our website, just click on the link uh, for Ghana December, and uh, you'll see uh, mm -hmm. general terms, which has the payment details. But also on the website, you'll see payment options. And uh, also, same as in this newsletter, you see maybe once or twice. And once you click on that link, it gives you a list of options. You're going to send me a general email, and we can talk and go through everything and get you set up. Okay. And do you have a herbal replacement for the yellow fever? So let's just say you say no to the vaccine. Um, is there something that we can take that's herbal that would basically do the exact same thing opposed to taking the um, the vaccination given here? Yeah, I guess and what I would say is once you click on any of the tour link, uh, regardless of whatever tour you click on, in your case, uh, if you click on the Ghana Tour December, you have a list of um, several articles, closer to 10, 
Uh, one of them is called um, improving your immune system. So that's what uh, people like myself recommend, uh, things that I know work as being from tropical country and being into how we just go back to eating from you know, the ground and eating all the tropical foods and keeping ourselves strong. So it's called building the immune system, and that's what I recommend. I don't recommend any of us taking any vaccinations or any kind of pills or any kind of uh, white people drugs. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you so much. All right. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Let me meet you. And Juma, go ahead. Uh, Juma, go ahead. No, I didn't have a question. Hey, good morning. This is Roger again. I'm calling again. Uh, go ahead, Delta. Yeah, you based on what you mentioned about the vaccination versus the uh, recommendation you have online, I would be really receptive to that, what you mentioned. But what if when I reach Ghana, they ask me for a vaccination, you know, um, proof of vaccination? Maybe unfortunately, they just ask me, you know, maybe one of them, and I said, well, no, I take something else. I apologize. Repeat that one more time and turn your mic up louder so I can hear you clearly. All right, are you hearing me now? Uh, yes, you just have to talk into the microphone or... Yeah, no. yeah. Okay, I'm asking about what you mentioned about the alternatives for yellow fever. Um, yes, I'm saying, yeah, I would receive it as something more um, natural. But what if uh, when I reach Ghana, the, you know, immigration or, or you know, authority asks for proof of yellow fever? How would I work around that? Well, the main thing is that they don't have a mandatory law in place or anything mandatory on the, the uh, website of the airport or the country that's saying that if you don't have a yellow fever card, um, you can't be let in or that you have to have a yellow fever card. Uh, so they have mixed information, uh, but they can't hold you to it. Uh, so um, what, you, what you can do, you have my information. Um, you can, you know, we're all going through the line at the same time. And um, yeah, We'll be all together, and uh, trust me, it's not something that I'm going to let anyone in the airport hold any of our uh, folks uh, who don't have a yellow fever card, because that's the case. They're going to have to hold most of the group members and most of the people in the line and most of the people that's coming off that flight. Uh, they're not organized to deal with that. I've dealt with all cases going in and out of the country for the last 13 years, and every information that I have is current and updated and based on experience of taking people in out of the country and not having anybody getting stuck because they didn't have a yellow fuel card. And uh, so I would say don't worry about it. Just follow through the things that you need to follow through and we're there with you and then you have my information. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one more thing. Um, you mentioned that there could be the adjustment of cost based on the amount of people, possible withdrawal or so forth. Um, so far, is anyone like withdraw and totally not going, or you know, um, that's you know. No, I mean, I, I didn't say we're going to charge anybody anything. I said the only thing I have right now, if you cancel, you people are subjected to different costs that they cancel or transfer, or do anything outside of, because all the tours that we have are a go. So I tell an, an individual, um, just let the airline cancel the tour. Don't cancel it because then we put ourselves subjected to cost. Uh, but if anybody wants to cancel and it's in a cancellation email, yeah, there's a lot of cancellation charge, um, especially if you leave in the next um, two months or so. Uh, so, but as far as the tour price of the tour itself, we don't adjust, we don't change the price. They all say $3,700, um, except for the ones from April changed to July. It's different because the price of tickets are more expensive in the summertime, and that's why I don't have summer dates to travel because a lot of times the ticket costs up to four or five hundred dollars. Uh, finish, um, uh, Delta. Okay, uh, all right. Um, I, I thought maybe I misunderstand about if you know people really um, things would be adjusted. So you clarify that. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. And then um, other situation is usually if we have twenty, like twenty-two or more people, what I usually do is just get us a nice coach bus. Um, but when the numbers drop below that, then you know, we don't, we do, all we do is just we adjust whatever we have to adjust on the actual tour itself to make everything fall within price. So in that case, we'd have to have a different kind of bus or a smaller bus. 
Okay. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you're welcome. And for anyone that's not clear on these things and you ever need anything in writing, just like anything else in general, you can just always uh, email me and I'll email you with a quick reply. Or we can always talk about it because uh, sometimes things are not going to always be clear based on how things are interpreted or presented. And that's for everyone that I've been communicating with. Uh, so, so everyone, appreciate your energy. Let me mute everybody back into lecture mode and then I'll open things up for question and answer in another few minutes and just go over a few more things. For those who have final questions, just uh, jot them down and we'll go through them. All right, so back on this uh, newsletter, as you can see on your, on your screen sharing, last we left off at was six, uh, improving your immune system. And again, family, what we have is just what we recommend based on experience and knowledge and information dealing, you know, dealing with natural health and wellness. And that document is on every tour link that we have improve your immune system. It's the same as uh, tour preparation and visa and things like that. Uh, those are just valuable information. So uh, you may look at all those things as a lot of information, but take your time, process, and look through it. That way you're clear on everything. And remember, when you're dealing with medical health and things like that, uh, we'll always recommend that you talk to your doctor or someone that you trust in the health in that situation because we're not medical doctors and we're not professionals in these things. All right, seven, uh, English to Ghana tree translation. Now that document is only set for Ghana, for the Ghana tours. And other tours based on us organizing the books and things you may drop one or two language translation. But this is something that was just you know, put together just to assist and connect people that wanted to learn a language uh, at one point and we just kept it around. Eight, departure and reminder list for your journeys. So the same thing as the improving your immune system and tour overview in general terms. That's a part of all of the tour details and just give you a list of 30 things and that list literally prepare and get you ready. And nine, um, we were talking about this in the questions and answers a little while ago. Uh, we usually have Delta E tickets set up and paid in full by 45 days before we travel. And based on whatever situation, sometimes the, the closest, so especially smaller trips, uh, 30 days. Uh, but that's all in the one to two month time frame that we just let everybody know that we're finalizing and paying for tickets. So that's why when you cancel like two to three months before the tour, it's like a lot of money has been spent on ticketing, final ticketing, and also sending everyone deposit and additional payment because at the 30 day to 60 day mark, you have to close out these things because you're trying to get prepared and you can't do them at the last minute. So everything has to be estimated to get done at uh, uh, that time. I attend tour registration, do as soon as possible. Uh, it's a link that I don't really worry too much about, uh, but it's a link that connects you into the website registration and give you like a website login and it's more for future use, but um, that's uh, something that we look, in a, we look at uh, when new people register that are interested in. We just still recommend that once you register, if you're interested in traveling, to send a direct email or call. So 11, uh, all tour deposits are due as soon as possible. So once we have the tours up, um, we start collecting the deposit, and that's to plan everything out because you don't always get everyone traveling with you uh, all at one time. But the most important thing is to have the information out ahead of time. And a commitment earlier this allows us to just organize tickets and get everything set up. Uh, so that's the link on 11, payment options. Uh, 12, bring white slash red slash black and green clothing. So based on whatever tour that we're doing, you may have different colors. Um, the Ghana tours, we have a set of whites for when we go to the Holocaust Dungeons, Cape Coast. A set of red, black, and green for when we go to uh, Holocaust Day uh, number two at uh, Sin Manso. And we may also use it as when we go to the 1957 Independence Energy uh, doing a, a cross city tour. Uh, 13, all the tours that we have, uh, we do our best to collect school supplies and donations and just try our best to have at least one to two schools 
uh, to three schools on each of the journeys based on holidays and things like that. Sometimes we're traveling during the holidays. Some schools and places may not always be open or accessible. But um, whatever we collect goes to bring it to the location and donate it and get a nice little presentation and just do some networking and connections. Uh, and it's all from the kindness of your heart. 14, baggage and airport arrival preparation. So this is always one of these situations where once you get your electronic ticket, all the information as far as airport preparation, uh, going through checkpoints, updated time frame, you can access right there through that uh, electronic ticket, and which is your final ticket. And the only thing you have to do from there on is to check in 24 hours before the flight and then proceed to your flight. Uh, 15, Repatriation and Investment Conference. So this is specifically for Ghana tours, but as time goes along, especially when we go to Senegal and Gambia, it's to build more of an energy there. You know, we need to get there and make a few connections there and do our best to connect people based on people that we already even know there. But that conference is designed to get you updated information as far as uh, the process of moving from here and traveling to living and doing business uh, in mainly Ghana. Uh, so that's why we have the Black Star Pan-African community set up. And that's why we do this conference, that way we can connect you with people so you can you know, build those relationships. And you have a lot of vendors and business people there at the conference. So only thing I always tell everyone is you know, to spend time, build up the energy, to spend time to network at that event. All right, so that's a list of topics, uh, 1 through 15. And as you scroll down, you see the Facebook link for all of the Facebook groups. So whichever tour that you travel on, click on the link and add yourself and then um, approve it. And below that is a list of all of the previous tours I've taken or, or organized now from December 2006 to December 2019. And then below that, you see links to Facebook, Twitter, the website, email, YouTube, and Instagram. So family, that's all the details uh, for a conference call. So what I'm going to do is put everybody back in a mute mode. All right, so family, I've gone over all of the details on the newsletter. So right now, this, um, if you have any questions, just unmute yourself. Uh, give your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Hi, Bomani. This is Jeff in Milwaukee. Hey, greetings, uh, Jeff. Uh, how's it going? Good, good. Uh, just to be clear, I'm scheduled to uh, take the trip in December to Ghana. If that trip is canceled, you're saying it will be rescheduled. If I cannot make the rescheduled date, how much of my money will I forfeit? It, 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 it would have to be based on the general terms. Like I can't give you a figure at this uh, moment of buying thing. It's just based on the general terms, but you're far away from uh, those things. We have a few tours before December, so I can't put in my mind about canceling the December tour when I got three other tours in front of there. So the best thing I could tell you about any kind of cancellation and transfer or anything is subject to the, um, the general terms. And the best I can do is literally just reschedule you based on whatever situation it is. And in that situation, the best thing I recommend is sending a detailed email to get a detailed reply. Uh, based on general terms and based on whatever the situation is. Okay, then let me put let me put my question this way: You just canceled the uh, Senegal trip, correct? Ah, uh, yes. Sir. That been re that's been rescheduled. As anyone who was uh, supposed to attend the Senegal trip unable to attend the rescheduled dates, how much money were they out of? You had two people um, that weren't able to do that schedule, and they were put on April 2021 instead of July 2020. It was no additional or any adjustment of cost. They were just transferred to that tour, and their ticket would be changed over from Delta with no cost. And that's that situation. So there's no time limit as to how far you'll go out as far as rescheduling. I just everybody's situation is going to be different. If you, if you literally, if you know, if you work in a job or a situation where you just, you know, it's like you were supposed to go in May and the dates were good, and then you want to reschedule in December because none of us can go, and then the company is saying that we need all people for, you know, it's a it's a holiday schedule, December 24th to January 5th. 
and they tell you you can't go, then the best thing that we can do is just work it out with you. It's not about charging anybody any more money or anything. That's not the way we think and the way we look at it. Uh, and all of these special situations are kind of different from what the general terms talk about. In a situation like this, you assist the person with being transferred to another tour. So your situation, it will be May 2021 or December 2021 based on you being open to waiting. You literally can't travel in December. Well, me being a person that likes to plan things almost a year in advance anyway, wouldn't it be easier for both of us if I were to just move my trip to 2021 now instead of incurring any cost on your behalf or my behalf? Yeah, I don't know why you'd move your trip to 2021. Um, because of the atmosphere we're in right now with the COVID thing. That's why. Yeah, that means I would have to, I would have to bring myself in a mindset to start changing um, the May trip, the July trip, the November trip, and you know we don't have a you know they don't have it like that to just be 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 making a bunch of adjustments. So the only thing I could tell everyone is that we live we literally have to wait till the time and essence of your trip comes around. If a situation come up where we can't fly, I've already explained to everyone that we're making those adjustments for them. But if you just want to change your trip and transfer your trip. You have to send me a detailed email, and in that situation, then the costs will kick in for transfer or cancellation or whatever you want to do. That's when those costs increase. But you have to let us communicate with you in a situation that you need to change. Uh, give us a chance to get to a situation where, you know, where we can make the adjustment for you. If you just randomly want to change, that's fine, but be prepared to deal with that cost. Other than that, all the tour is a go. Um, our schedule is set to take us there, and if anything stops us from going there, then we'll help you make the adjustment without those additional costs unless we don't have a choice. Um, so hopefully that's uh, clear. Uh, yeah, hopefully that's clear because I have 80 people on the list to travel with me this year. Uh, just everyone that's bear with me and um, working on us leaving for Ghana this mo next month and then Senegal in July. So any trip that's not those trips, please, I can't answer honestly any questions about anything else. Um, once we clear those two trips, you would know what's going on in the world because you'll see us coming back and moving around. So then you can make any, then you can make process adjustments for those things. Other than that, it's too much for us to really think about and process. Um, after a while, all of this craziness that was going on and all the lies and all of the gimmicks that the world, evilest, wickedest people, have always lied and played games. After all that, they come to clarity. We, you know, definitely be able to move forward uh, because this one of the things that's going on is that uh, we can't believe um, the wicked media and the wicked governments that portray their drama. So I would tell everybody, just, you know, just we'll keep you posted. We have emails, we have conference calls, and updates being sent around. And the best thing to do is to look at all of the current trips that we have going on and see what's going on with that and then process from there. Other than that, I'm a military tactical person and uh, what we're doing is the best strategy to progress and keep our connections in Ghana going to move forward and build in our community and that's why we're building our community there because of things like this, us not having any power to do the things we need to do and having to live on the people, um, you, know, you know, people oppression and their, 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 you know, their incompetent decisions and things like that. So nevertheless, family, um, uh, we're moving forward, and anyone have any detailed question more beyond things you feel like I've not answered, the best thing I can recommend is type it up in the email and get a reply back in an email, and then let's talk. Other than that, um, looking to see if anyone else have any final questions before we close out. Try the family line is open. I'll keep uh, things open for another few minutes, and then I end the recording. And the best thing I can tell everybody is, is turn off your TV and study a new trade and focus on the future. And once these people stop doing their stupidity, let's move forward in what we need to do. All right, anyone else that didn't get a chance to ask a question, the line is open. The line is open. Unless everybody call us about what we're going to do about the situation. Anyway, family, uh, we're going to always move forward. So. 
Link me if you have any questions, final updates before we take off. And if things are just not looking good, it's what it is, we'll be able to decide and work things out by then. Other than that, we'll all be prepared to travel with us. And beyond that, um, we keep everybody posted. Hi, right, family. I guess nobody have any more questions. So everybody, you take care, and I'll connect back with you and keep you posted. So all line is unmuted. Everybody, Good take evening, care. Good night. Take care. Enjoy your night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Bonani. Take care.